Welcome to my show. My name is Marcel Johnson, and this is A Freedom Experience. can I say, man? I'm excited. We finally got my bro. Y'all don't understand what it took to get my bro here on the show, <laughs> but I finally had to just drag him and get him here on the show, man. So without further ado, I want to formally introduce you to Tony, always get his name, to Braun. Got it. Hey, let's go, yeah, man. There. See, I call him Tone Dog, you know what I'm saying? But one thing that you guys don't know is that Tony plays a significant part on the freedom experience. You feel me? He is somebody who has helped me to capture all the different uh, interviews, every single thing that you guys are able to see. Tony is the man behind the camera being able to capture everything. So, man, shout out to Tone, dog, man. Shout out to Tone. You feel me? Like, Tone you, is always here. He's on the set. He's very professional. And if you guys need videography work or any type of work, make sure you hit up my guy as long as you don't steal him off of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I just, like, before I even get into this interview, I want to take time and just honor him because a lot of people don't realize what type of heart that he has. He has a servant's heart, and it's just been a wrap for me to sit back and be a part of the grooming process of just helping him and pulling him out of his shell, getting him to that level where God can really utilize him and take his life, his career, his mindset, everything to the next uh, to the next level. And watching that and life coaching him. I don't know if you guys noticed, I said a lot, but I'm a life coach, you feel me? And a lot of times God gives me people to life coach who's right there on the brink of like uh, walking in their purpose, but they need some help. And Tony has transformed so much and he has evolved so much. And I just want you guys to capture, you know what I mean? My brother, I wanted to capture, but I wanted you guys to kind of see a little bit behind the curtain of who Tone Dog is and who's a part of this beautiful thing God's blessed me with called the Freedom Experience. So let's get into it. Let's go. Hey, let's get into it, bro. So I'm first excited. of all, how you feel today? Bro, I'm, I'm geeked. You I'm, geeked? Dude, I'm geeked. I'm excited. Why are you so geeked? I did just the experience of just being here with you. Okay. Um, you know, God's good. He's He's always providing and just another day to live, another day to do his purpose. Yeah. So, um, again, I'm just fortunate and just blessed to experience God's love each and every day and have that opportunity to spread that wow. for sure. This is what I'm saying. He is a, like, so if y'all don't know this, behind the scenes on a freedom experience, there's a whole like worship and a whole like deliverance process where people are delivered. People are transformed. Tony's a part of that. He speaks into people's life. He's here being transformed. If you've never been on the set or behind the scenes, you have to come and just join, man. I know all my guests, they hit me up. They tell me how it's transformed them. Yeah. Let me ask you that. What do you think happens behind the scenes that people don't get to see as far as like the guests and when they come? What do you think happens? Oh, man. I, I think it's just, it's an atmosphere of love, honestly. Uh, I mean, even before the guests get here, I come to get set up with the show. And yeah. you always have music playing, worship music, some kind of music that just puts the focus back on God. I was thinking mm. about that today. Um, wow. As I was getting ready to come here, it's wow. like everything we do has to put the focus back on God. If it's Thank not putting the focus back on God, it's not worth doing. And so that's something that I'm trying to learn to walk out in my own life as well. It's like, what am I doing to put the focus back on God and not myself? How do you, because a lot of things you do in your life really isn't about you. So how do you keep your focus on God? How do I keep my focus on God? Yeah. Man, one is just making sure I'm getting the word. Okay. Making sure that, you know, again, what I'm listening to, what I'm watching, and it's not every day that I'm like focused, but when I, I start to see patterns form, mm. I have to take that moment and really be like, all right, what am I doing that like, it's not like, why isn't this working out? Or why do I seem to see these patterns start to show up again? It's like, mm. cause my focus has gotten shifted. It's not focused on him. Um, I love the, the scripture on. where it talks about seek first the kingdom and all these things are added unto you. Yeah. And I think a lot of people though get that misconstrued with like 
we yeah we want to seek the kingdom first, right. but we get so focused on the things being added. Mm. And and something you said too is like we already have everything we need. Like Come God's on. already given it to us. Yeah, it's up to us to just walk in it, accept it, reach up there and grab it, right? So my thing is, all right, I know I have everything I need. Let me yep. just focus on His kingdom, and it, and this has been a recurring theme, even just within the past few weeks. Yeah, it's just it, it's it's about kingdom and what this kingdom look like. I mean, um, at my church, we're in our life groups. We're reading a book called Kingdom Culture. Yeah, and it's it's just all about what the culture is and the difference between kingdom culture versus worldly culture. Okay, and just where we're at in that aspect. So for me, it's just a focus of kingdom. And, and wanting to live that purpose out and just make sure that I'm bringing heaven to earth. Yeah, come on, like, bro is really speaking nothing but the Holy Spirit words. What's so amazing to me is that he says something so profound. A lot of people is seeking the kingdom for what they can get instead of seeking the king. And I love the Bible does say, seek the kingdom and all these things will be added. But the most important thing is that you seek the king of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And when you are personally connected to that king and you accept him and you're able to walk in that authority, in that glory, everything that is his becomes yours. And then you no longer have to beg or tweak for things because you become a joint heir with him. Now those things belong to you. And then... It's through you having intimacy with that spirit that it teaches you how to receive those mm -hmm. things. It teaches you how to bring the kingdom to earth. The things of the kingdom are not of the world. Nope. So you have to go into the spirit room and pull them out from the kingdom into the physical world. And that's what I'm seeing Tone do. So Tone, tell us how you got into videography and photography and all that stuff because he shoots a lot of me and I know you know YS1, he's a rapper, he's one of my friends, one of my best friends, and he's a rapper. Me and Tone sometimes will double team and shoot uh, YS1's video, but majority of the time it is Tone who is shooting the videos. What inspires you and how did that get started? It's my dad, honestly. My dad's my greatest hero. Shout honestly. out dad, shout out dad. dad. Um, when I was growing up, okay, he was in film school, I mean, you, you think this guy was raising four kids, working and going to school at the same time. Wow. And um, so watching him do what he does mm -hmm. is really what got me involved with mm. video um, and filmmaking and a love for it and a passion. Okay. So yeah, it just all stems from my dad and just seeing his hard work. And I always wanted to be around my dad. I don't care what he was doing. I was like, wow. dad, I just want to be around you. Wow. Um, and so I kind of equate that too. It's like, that's kind of the mentality we should have with our Heavenly Father, too. It's like, I Come just on. want to be around you. I just want to do what you do, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, so it's like, he, my dad has always guided me. Like, I remember I was looking to go to a, a tech school. I almost did collision auto repair, which I okay. love cars, by the way. Like, don't, don't <laughs> Oh, get yeah, me wrong. like, Toe like, will <laughs> fix your tire and chain, give you an oil change and everything. Like, yeah, um, bros, he's really like that. But yeah, so I was getting ready to, you know, choose an auto class. And my dad was like, why don't you try this? It was uh, a course called Commercial Art Computer Graphics. I was like, well, I guess, like, and I trusted my dad, and I was like, because he said, this would get you closer to filmmaking. I was like, all right. So I took his word for it, um, joined the class, fell in love with it. So not only did I fall in love with videography and filmmaking, but I fell in love with graphic design as well. So, and it, it all works, and I'm seeing it even more now, like in films, like you need graphic designers yeah. to create all those like little, um, like if you're looking at someone on a computer screen, you see all those profiles show up yep. or pictures of people. Yep. Like all that's graphic design. And so, would you say that you love doing it, like it's a passion for you, or would you say it's more of like something you want to do for business? I I love I love it all. Um, business wise, <laughs> it's tough, man. Okay, so running a business is not Come all on. it's cracked up to be. It isn't. Um, you really have to have discipline. You really have to just. It has to be. A passion so I would say yes this is a passion of mine I love creating things I love helping people figure out their identity that's for right. their business that's right um, and I mean and this is it everything we do again reflects back to kingdom so like finding your identity in your business is the same as us helping people find their identity in Christ this is so right and to be real with y'all tone like He's a creative person, right? And he has all these ideas and he'll go and pursue them. And I think that him challenging himself as far as taking his passion, his purpose into his business is somewhere that I think was a struggle for you, but you some way, somehow was able to navigate and pull all your creative abilities and make a business out of it. A lot of times people have these natural gifts, right? God blesses us with them. And then we don't really know how to make these into businesses. Yep. And then we're doing it for free and we're, we're actively doing 
doing it in. It's for the kingdom. But God is like, I want you to start charging and I want you to make a business out of this so that you can, you know what I mean, benefit from the gifts that I've given you. So yeah. how hard was that process of creating a business out of just natural born passions? It, it was definitely hard. Yeah. Not having a whole lot of examples Come on. as well. Um, so I had to do a lot. Like, I was in school for it, but again, I'm that, I, I figured out I'm that type of person that school wasn't made for me and I wasn't made for school. Hey, come on. <laughs> Listen. I'm not knocking school. I think it's a great opportunity. <laughs> I think, though, what needs to happen is that we really need to be thoughtful. If we're going to choose school, we yeah. need to be doing the research, see what jobs are going to be actually available yeah. for us after the four years of going to school or however long it takes because what we end up doing is we're taking these courses or we're just going to school because that's the thing to do. That's Come what on. we're supposed to do, right? Um, but we're not really looking into how that's gonna, what that's gonna look like once we get out. And now we have a lot of people in our own generation who have gone yeah. to school, massive amount of debt, and they're working at a Burger King or they're exact, working exactly. somewhere outside of their degree. Their degree. And that's, he's saying, what you're saying is so much fact. It's like facts because I went to school, I graduated college, and the things that I'm doing, it kind of like my college degree helps me in that way, but I definitely could be doing everything I'm doing without that degree, right. but it's definitely helped me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very intentional for you to know what you're going to school for, because school yeah. is not for everybody. Doesn't It does not mean that you're not smart or you don't, you know what I mean? You're not intelligent because you didn't go to college or you didn't finish or dropped out. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to say, Tone, what type of childhood did you have and what are some of the struggles you dealt with as a child? Because Tone is like a different individual. If you could tell, he's himself. But I know that that road to becoming that wasn't necessarily the easiest. So how would you say was your childhood and what are some things you struggle with? Uh, so my childhood, for the most part, wasn't horrible. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm a product of divorce. Okay. So having to come from California to Pittsburgh, meet a new Shout person. Shout out Cali. Uh, meet a new person who's going to be my mom yep. uh, i wasn't with it at first like yeah me and my stepmom we didn't have the greatest relationship starting okay. off it wasn't until i want to say 2011 2012 ish where her and i actually started reconciling some of our differences mm. we both apologized for the way we acted as yeah. i was growing up because um, there was a point i had threatened to hit her yeah like i and i made her cry and at the time it didn't really <laughs> hit me like I'm not as this like clean like so person, like, like yeah. So you had some, you had <laughs> like, some issues with oh, your yeah. stepmom. Oh yeah. So I what think. are some other things you might have dealt with? Um, there was some abuse, sexually, um, physical abuse yeah. growing up. Um, yeah. You know, m my mom, my biological mom. Yeah. Uh, after my parents got divorced, she uh, was dating various different guys, and there was one guy in particular who didn't treat me and my sister um, well. Right. Um, there was some, it was just some odd situations. I actually ended up having to go to court and stuff like that for wow. it. Um, yeah, so it was it was tough sexual abuse for sure. Yeah. Um, things that you, no one should have to experience. That's you know? right. Unfortunately, we live in a dark world and, and that's what happens, but you know, God. But God, I love that, but God, because what's so beautiful, bro, is that so many people, and this is why I do the Freedom Experience, and this season, if you can tell, last season was really, really a heavy, and it was about deliverance. So many people talked about sexual abuse, mm -hmm. talked about rape, molestation, drugs, alcohol. And this season was kind of more uh, more creative and more about stepping out on your purpose. But I love the fact Tone took us still back to that place. But it's like our generation, so many people was molested and raped, mm -hmm. and so many things happened to our generation that the parents and everybody ahead of us didn't ever warn us or tell us about. Right. And then everybody has to deal with these generational curses, and it's mm -hmm. up for us to break them. So I think if you've ever dealt with issues like that, come forward, talk to people, you know what I mean? Step out and get your power back. Don't, yeah, don't, don't live in that, yeah, in that shameful, dark place. So I love the fact you turned it around. Now, if you can't tell, you know, typically like, uh, black people act ratchet typically, white people act proper. That's the way that the world sets it up, right? So Tone is like black, right? But he's like a white boy. This is <laughs> like, we say like Tone's like the white boy. So I know growing up and being like the white boy took its toll on you in some way, but how did you get to the place where you are comfortable in your own skin to be like, listen, I am the white boy and this is who I am, but y'all gonna deal with it. How did you get to that place? Honestly, it was, it was God just sending people 
that accepted mm. me for who Come I was. Come on, man. Acceptance. Um, you know, and and it took some some work on my end just to believe that who I am is who I'm supposed to be. Like Ooh. this is how God created me. Be okay, okay with that. Like be okay. cool with it. Like you're made this way for a specific reason. I'm able to connect with so many different people just because Facts. of who I am yep. and how I act. Yep. Um but there's times when people, like my own family members, would be like, "Oh, you talk white," and like, so I felt a sh- like I felt some kind of guilt. I'm like, "Well, should I be acting this way?" To the point where I was mm-hmm. dressed in a certain way, yep. listening to only certain types of music, yep. saying, "Oh, I don't like this." I listen to everything now. Trying like, to conform to the world, exactly, and the Bible yeah. tells you to be renewed in your mind. It's crazy because like I'm from the hood, but I don't do necessarily the typical hood things. Mm-hmm. I'm not shooting, robbing, stealing nobody. I'm not going all crazy and haywire with just like females and wilding out. It's like I'm living like a clean cut life and I'm just living a life that's for the kingdom and for God. Yeah. So I think that more importantly than the worldly perspective of who Tone is, he is a kingdom citizen of of heaven and he acts like that and he portrays that and he allows the Holy Spirit to walk in his life. And it's so important mm-hmm. for you to be comfortable with yourself. Because yeah. the world don't need the fake tone that's trying to be hood, but really this is him. We need him because he's able to be here, add value, just like me. If I start acting like something else that I'm not, it just takes away from who I really am. Mm-hmm. So your story is really going to encourage people to be their self. If you had to tell somebody at home who's struggling with identity, whose family is like, you're the white boy, you're the white girl, or something like that, what is something you would tell them? Man, honestly, if you if you're getting that, like you have people talking, saying you're this and that. Yeah. Like really, really just seek God on it. Ooh, seek yep. God. Um, yep. And getting into the word because that's how it, it happened for me. And also mm. get around people who don't care what Come you on. Look like. Act just like. accept you. Yeah. Um, that, that's the biggest thing. And if you can't, man, I always say just like get into a church. Get yeah. into a church. Because you're, you may have a bad experience with Christians. I'm telling you, there are Christians out there though, that are authentic, that yeah. truly love you, yep. that just want to see the best for you, want you to live in the blessings that God has for you. Yep. So really, I mean, again, seek first the kingdom, seek God. He's going to reveal to you who you truly are to where you don't even have to question it, to where people who come at you and be like, yo, you're this, 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 and be like, nah, step back. Come I know on. who I am. This, like, you can let this stuff roll off of you. Like, water off a duck's back like that's what it's what all I'm, about this is what i'm saying man and it's time it's like 2022 it's time yeah. to be free it's time for you to be yourself like there's no more pretending to be somebody else like mm-hmm. be yourself no be one free wants the second best of someone else come on you can only if you're gonna be you be you be you, be you to a hundred percent because trying to be someone else you're gonna just be depressed you're gonna be tell them. Trying, you're gonna feel this weight on you that is like it's you're going to paralyze yourself from moving forward that you're not even going to be able to accomplish the things that you, your own dreams outside of being a christian whatever if you don't even know god like you trying to accomplish the things you want to accomplish if you're not you you're not going to accomplish them because there are certain things that god is blessing you with in pages that are written about your life that it's it's like uh what's the word called it's basically very important for you to be yourself to show up because if you show up as somebody else you miss that blessing you got to show up as yourself so that you can receive the things God has for you. So I wanted to ask you, bro, like, what are some issues and some problems that you see in business that you feel like it stops people from being able to get over that home? Because I know watching you, you've been able to get over these homes, but you still battle in that way with business, whether it's relationships, whether it's just making a decision to stay focused. How do you allow yourself to stay in that place of uh, being productive? One, it's just being consistent okay um willing to sacrifice your time okay um whether it be with family or friends um just be a man of your word be a woman yeah. of your word yeah like if you say you're gonna do something do it follow through be honest be upfront with people uh this is mm. something that i've had to learn and deal with because i'm a perfectionist come on and so i don't like to present things to people unless i feel like it's perfect yeah and so what that would do is cause me to not communicate you should always communicate. So I would not communicate with a client and then like three, four weeks goes by and then I get a call from a client, like, hey, what's going on with this? And then like, yeah. I would even avoid those calls. Like I I would end up avoiding clients. Tony did that talking. to me. He'll, I'd be like, bro, where is the episode that for the freedom experience? He'll ignore me. I'll be like, bro, stop yep. ignoring me. So he's not lying to y'all. He's telling you the truth. Mm-hmm. But I want to play a game. All right. So the game that I want to play, bro, is Mary kill 
or um, hold up, how does it go? It's like Mary kill, and it's I not the one about like about. having sex. So we not gonna do that here. No, but it's like mean, no. Mary kill, or what's the other one? I can't remember. Oh man, yeah. I had that game, and like I wrote it down, <laughs> but it's not on his question card. All right, so we'll switch it up. I'll play a different game with you. Um, let's play this game. So you have your your photographer. You mm -hmm. first of all, you tell the people what you are, your title. Of my title? <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you do? You explain that real fast. Um, so I'm a filmmaker, graphic designer, you know, uh, but before all that, I'm a child of God, like for real. Yeah. Um, anything I do, I, I try to let God influence. God is the ultimate creator. Therefore, I have this source <laughs> to creativity. Nothing can uh, keep me from creating something, you know, so yeah, creator. All right. So I got what I'm going to do. I had to think about it and be like, all right, what can I do? <laughs> all right. So look. You as a filmmaker, you shooting things. Would you rather shoot reality TV like Love and Hip Hop? Would you rather shoot something that's like child, like that's boring, like Nickelodeon? Or would you rather shoot something that's for like Channel 4, just like a local channel? And you know what I'm saying? Like something that's not really going nowhere. Which one would you rather do? Now, guess. the reality TV, you're going to get mad money, right? Mm -hmm. The kids is going to kind of make you be childlike, but at the same time, you're going to get okay money. And then... Uh, the people in Pittsburgh, like, or the, the local channel is going to pay you the most. Which one are you going to do? See, all right. I, I got a question for you. Hold up. Do you watch reality TV? I, I, see, I've watched a lot of reality TV. <laughs> so, bro is like, yes, like, I'll shoot Love and Hip Hop. I don't know if I shoot Love and Hip Hop. The thing <laughs> is, see, this is my thing. I have a thing about reality TV because it's not real. Okay. A that's, lot of it is scripted. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. So do I want to be a part of something that puts on a false facade? Mm. Even though I'm getting paid good money for what it? What if it's fun? If it's, see, I got to be honest. Like, my whole moral thing, like, I'm like, I'm at a point where it's like, yeah, that'd be great to do. Yeah. But what's the impact? Yeah. So for, honestly, man, I'd probably do the local channel. For real? The local? Yeah. All right, what's your biggest, like, what's your aspiration? What's your big goal? I know, but tell the people so that when we look back on this, we can vision cast and be like, bro really accomplished his dream. I'm going to help him, yeah. by the way. So it's been a dream of mine always since I was a kid okay. to own a business that um, would be able to have influence in the industry. Yeah. To, to bring, to uh, teach kids in high school and even younger, and even college, have programs to where they can come work for me or do an externship, internship, whatever it may be. And if I can't hire them, yeah. I can at least send them out to other places in the industry and with my letter of recommendation, um, give these people a chance to actually work in the industry that they're trying to work in. We talked about this and it's like everybody that's on my team has a vision of owning almost like a, a compound or like some type of organization that brings people in, trains them, and then sends them back out into the world in their purpose and in their gift. And what do I always say I am? You're an influencer of influencers. This is So what do you think? You being behind the scenes, what do you think? About? About me influencing influencers. Uh, I, I think it's incredible and the opportunity like that that's a huge call mm. on you for real to to have to be an influence of influence i mean you're thinking these people are already influencing people and they're getting influenced by you which means it's just it's a ripple effect it's it, it yeah. there's no bad that can come from it right like you're only building people up and in that building you're going to be building yourself um, so no, I think it's an awesome thing to be an influencer. Now, I don't think I can handle that calling <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> That's a lot of responsibility. And I commend you on just being so diligent with it and just um, really putting value to it and, yeah. and not taking it for granted, not making it light. Yeah. Like you're taking this serious. There's consequences for you not following through on what you're called to do. Listen. So uh, like I said, I, I commend you. You're an inspiration. Like, I look up to you in that aspect. Like, Thank you. I just want to be able to have that same amount of love that you have for people as well. Wow. That makes me feel good because more than, like, clout, more than recognition, you see me behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You see me, like, when the camera's off, when it's, like, irritating days and stuff yep. like that. You see my frustrated moments, and that's what it is that you, like, that's what you, that's you're, what you. You're able to die to yourself for the mm. greater good, for the greater purpose. And that's what it comes down to. Are we able to die to ourselves to accomplish what God has called us to do? Wow. 
I feel like, bro, that I feel like I just won an award somewhere. <laughs> like I feel like nobody sees me do that, and I don't even do it for recognition. But it's amazing. Like one of my biggest goals is to leave breadcrumbs of my life so that even if somebody followed me, they would end up in heaven. Mm -hmm. Like even if they had no clue what to do on earth, if they just followed my steps, they would end up in the arms of God. And the fact that I make it a point, like every day that I wake up, I try to do that. And you being behind the scenes, you're so important to the freedom experience. You're so important to Grace Life. You're so important to all the different organizations that you're helping because you um, you have good time management and you give yourself fully. Like if Tone's committed to a job, he's committed to it. He pours himself into it. And the way you pour yourself into the freedom experience, it is a blessing. And it is so fun to watch because Tone isn't always this nice little <laughs> guy. Like Tone get, he know how to have self-control, but Tone get in his bag a little bit. And like, he's, he's really like funny. Y'all didn't really, y'all seen some of that sad, but Tone, man, it has been awesome just having you on the Freedom Experience. Thank I you. finally got to interview my bro. Like, this is <laughs> this is legendary. Y'all going to look back on this and be like, yeah, this one was one for the books. So, you know, I always like to close the episode out because you're always here. <laughs> what, what, what do we close the episode out, bro? Words of wisdom. Right? Words of wisdom. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, give me your words of wisdom. Um, let's see. My words of wisdom is just be you. Trust God and let the pieces fall where they need to fall. Um, mm. Because in the end of the day, when you're being true to yourself, you can be true to everybody. Mm. Those are my words of wisdom. I try to live by that. Be true to yourself, be honest, treat people with love and respect because you don't know what battle someone else is battling. Mm. Wow. Be you, let the chips fall where they may. And what was the last one? And just um, treat people treat people like people because you don't yeah. know what battle they're facing. Oh, I always say that, man. Like, I realize that people, I think what helps me love people for real is because I have an understanding that people are fighting invisible forces mm -hmm. that we can't even see. Yeah. And sometimes their aggression, their anger, their feelings really isn't even about us. It's really what they're dealing with. So I just treat them with love and compassion. So your words of wisdom, man, it's, it's real deal. It's literally why he's a part of the freedom experience because he lives what he says. So I wanted to say, you know what my words of wisdom is already. You know what we always say. Yes, sir. It's time. Find freedom. It's time. Find God. Let's go. <laughs> All right, y'all. We love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace. The Freedom Experience.